Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So uh, we got another meatloaf cooking here in uh, the typical mix of uh, subjects. Um, we're going to show a couple of homemade tools uh, that go with the cutting torch. Uh, I probably won't demo them, but we'll show how they go on the torch and how you use them. Uh, some guys that uh, use a cutting torch pretty regularly uh, might be interested in this. Um, got some flea market stuff, uh, not a lot, it was kind of a wimpy flea market, so, uh, but I got a few things, so we'll show that. Um, been uh, working on the, some design on the, the large etching press, and um, I have a compression spring that I want to, uh, to test. Um, it's a valve spring out of, a, uh, out of an engine, um, heavy duty engine by the way. Um, that we're going to use a tomometer to uh, uh, use in compression as opposed to tension that we've been using it. Um, so I'm also going to finally tell the, the thermostat story um, and because uh, I have a, uh, another subject we're going to make a little uh, we're going to make a little base for the uh, this pressure gauge uh, mechanical curiosity that I got the other day and let's see what else are we going to put in there I don't know, we may find something else to stick in there. Oh, I got some, um, some video footage of the, uh, the flea market that we're going to put in. Um, I took the lower resolution camera to the flea market just because it's um, uh, more convenient to, uh, to shoot with there. So uh, um, anyway, uh, I'll, I'll tack that on to the end and you guys can get a look at the, uh, the local flea market uh, near us here. So uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's get going and let's have some fun. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, the flea market finds today. Um, not not a real exciting one today. Uh, kind of a small haul, but you know you got to go and you got to look. And uh, I shot some video footage that you guys will get to look at. So let's look at the uh, the first one here. Um, this is a guy who had a bunch of junk, <laughs> literally. Let's get rid of the box, and um, he had a bunch of different punches and dies, uh, but these were intriguing to me because um, I recognize them, this style fits my Rotex punch. So uh, now this one doesn't, that's for something else there, and it's a weird size. Anyway, but um, all these, like this one here, uh, this style here with the cross hole, and then these with this little wasted, uh, you know, with a little waste in between there, those all fit my... Uh, my Rotex. Um, you know, some of them are a little chowdery looking, but uh, it was five bucks for this whole lot right here. And a little piece of press brake die here, uh, which could come in handy for something. I'll clean that up. Looks like it's been abused, but uh, uh, we'll clean that up a little bit. Um, and then a piece of um, uh, brush stainless, looks like 14 gauge, something like that. Um, was in the bottom of the box and it's kind of a grain finish anyway five bucks for that and that same guy I got um, uh, you know what I'm gonna have to uh, this uh, husky little uh, electrician's tool bag here for five bucks um, you know what I've been doing lately with uh, with toolkits is kind of um, setting them up as very specific purpose. Like I have one similar to this that I use just for electrical. And then um, I may set one up just for, uh, you know, just a lightweight one that you can grab and take to the other side of the shop or put in the car if you go look at a machine or, or I don't know what, you know, and uh, where it has this kind of a, um, you know, purpose built uh, selection of tools in it. And um, so anyway, oh yeah, and then let's see. That was in the, bo in, the, in the bag, another set of um, driver bits. These are, these are cheapo ones here. Um, anyway, so anyway, the two things were $10 uh, for those. And then, uh, yeah, see, this could be really easy. I got, I got two, little, two little lots to show here. Um, the next one is another one of these screw starters. I, you guys have seen me pick these up before. And this is a, a, a Pullman here. Pullman devices, and um, it's got the little um, twist lock thing there to uh, for starting screws at a distance. Okay, and then this here, this was intriguing because we deal with this a lot at work. Uh, 
Um, this is a retractable safety scalpel. And uh, so if you push it out, you got a cutting blade there. And uh, then you can, you, can, you can retract it. And, um, you know, and it's, it's safe, okay? So well, we have the old school kind of scalpels at work, you know, that are always out like this. And people get stuck on them pretty regularly, and uh, the safety folks kind of, uh, um, you know, they're always kind of on our case about, you know, leaving scalpels out and about, you know, like we're using them, you know. Um, anyway, uh, um, it's got like 25 different locks on it here, so you got to push that in to retract it. There you go. And it won't come all the way out because it's got that. And then when you push it in, it's got another one, so you don't push it in too fast, right? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, this is this is what happens when you turn engineers loose and uh, tell them make it uh, um, completely safe, right? <laughs> make a knife completely safe. So that's what you end up with. So that's it. That's it. I, it was kind of a light day for me, and uh, my wife got some stuff, and um, uh, it was a nice day. I got to walk around a little bit and uh, had breakfast afterwards. Okay. Anyway, that's it. Okay. So here's this uh, here's this spring that we're gonna test. And this is a, uh, a valve spring out of a racing engine that uh, uh, a friend of mine gave me. And uh, what I want to do is I just want to check the, the spring rate of this. I want to use this as a, a counterbalance for something. And, uh, but I want to know how much compression um, I'll be looking at to be at the, the load that I want to, uh, that I want to be at. Um, so... This, this is the Tomo meter, you guys have seen this, um, and you've seen it used in tension. Well, it also works in compression too, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a little, little stud in there like that, and then this will pile it on that and just kind of retain it. And we're gonna squeeze it here in the Kurt vise. And um, we'll measure it before, and then we'll measure at, uh, some different uh, compression levels so we can plot the uh, we can plot the rate. Get these jaws out of here. Actually, we could probably use these and put them on the outside. Yeah, let's just do that. They're steel, so that work. Let's see, can you guys see that? Yeah, you can see that. Okay. So I got to put the jaws on the uh, kind of on the outside. I need to, I need a little more uh, length than uh, the the vise can open up. Okay, and then I'm going to put this one on the back here. So if you didn't if you didn't know you could do that, then you know you do. Now those holes are <laughs> sound like they're crudded up a little bit because uh, I don't use them. I don't use them very often. You'd probably be right if you guessed that. Okay, so here's the game. Um, I think we're gonna go like this. That way this can lay on here nicely, and then, oh, you know what, I gotta raise it up a little bit. Yeah, these jaws aren't quite tall enough here. Um, but this one's probably okay in this end here, let's see. I, you know, I want this fully bearing on the, uh, on the jaw there. Yeah, okay, I gotta get the, uh, and you can see the gauge is going there. There's 100 pounds right there. Okay, let me, uh, I'll swap out and I'll put the even taller. I have some taller ones. I'll put those in and then we'll, we'll come back. Okay, so we're kind of all set up. I got this up on some parallels and it's just, just barely clamped in there. I'm gonna switch handles here, I think. And so our starting dimensions, two and a half inches. And uh, actually, let me get a little notepad. I'm gonna write down a, write down a couple of spots here. And we'll uh, get a couple of uh, points, little data points there. Okay, so 
length and then uh, force so 2.5 force 0 okay all right so let's uh, I don't know let's do uh, a half inch here So that's three, about 300 pounds. The length is now two. 2.0, 300 pounds. Okay. And uh, so let's go down, I don't know, one and three quarter. It's one and three quarter. That's 500 pounds. 1.75, 500 pounds, and um, then I'm going to go down, looks like we'll go down to one and a half, is probably about as far as we're going to go. That's getting down there. Oop, I heard something creak there. And that is 650 pounds. Something, yeah, that's not jammed up, okay. So, 1.50. 650 pounds. Okay, so let's back it off. See that we return to zero. Yes, looks pretty good. Okay. Two and a half, yeah. Okay, let's just try that one more time. I'm just going to go to the uh, 1.75 and see if it all repeats nicely. Okay, one point so yeah, 500 pounds, 1.75. Okay, so um, um, I think I got an idea what uh, what the spring can do here. Um, I, don't, I didn't show this earlier. Let me take this off. But uh, it's kind of an interesting spring. It's a, uh, it's a triple valve spring here. So it's got this big honking outer. Then it's got an inner going the opposite direction. Then it's got an inner inner going the opposite direction yet again. So, uh, you know, these crazy car racers, you know, they come up with all kinds of stuff. Uh, uh, but that's a, that's a pretty big engine. I think that's a 500-inch uh, racing, uh, boat racing engine. So 500 cubic inch. Uh, racing boat engine, so that's the spring we want to use for that uh, for that etching press counterbalance. So I, w I went back and I'm I'm trying this again here. Actually, it's kind of interesting. Um, I put a washer in here. Uh, let me back it off, and you guys can see the washer. Um, I put a washer in here because you know this wasn't fully bearing on the. Uh, it wasn't fully bearing on the the tombo meter here, so I said, "Well, let me just try it again. I'll put this washer on here and uh, give it a full um, a full bearing surface to sit on." And interestingly, um, I'm getting some different readings now. Okay, so there I'm touching. So. Um, and they're higher actually, so uh, which is curious. So I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. So I'm going to do it again. Um, so two and a half zero, and let's go down. All right, let's go back to where we were. Two inch, right about there. All right, something's going on here. What the hell is going on here, Mr. Wizard? Hold on a second. That's what it is. You know what? Let me. Uh, can't believe that would make a difference, but hey, you never know. Let's take that parallel out of there, out of the equation here. It's kind of free to free to find its place there. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Let's go down to two, see what we get here. Now what the heck here? Oh, maybe the, oh, you know what, it was the, uh, 
was the uh, the gauge might have been sticking a little bit huh interesting okay so that's 400 instead of 300 that's different so 2.0 400 all right let's go to um, it's the next 1.75 Let's give this a little bounce, and that is 600, okay, 0. 0.75, 600, and then the last one was uh, 1.5, 1. 1.5, 1. let's give that a little bounce, and that is 750. Okay, so 100 pounds higher. Okay, 1.50750. So maybe the gauge was sticking on the first run. I'll do this a couple more times just to. Uh, actually, I want to go one more. Let's see how far we can go here. One and three eighths. Let's see if we can go down to one and a quarter. Okay, there's one and a quarter, and that's almost a thousand pounds. That's nine nine fifty. 1.25, 950 pounds, okay. All right, so, and it's not coil bound yet, but it's getting close. Uh, uh, that's fairly, fairly well compressed. Okay, put that up there so it doesn't fall down, all right. some chamfers on that. Okay, so uh, we're going to smack some chamfers on this thing. And um, so we're going to use this bit, the back jaw as our reference. And then uh, we're just going to cut something that looks like what we want. And we're just using a single fluid countersink here. And it's 90 degrees. Sure, why not, right? See what that looks like. Eh, I think I want it bigger than that. Uh, I'll just come in a little bit. All right. Stuff cuts great. And then what I do is without moving anything, I can just flop my piece around four times and They're all the same then. I don't have to pick up any edges or screw around. Since it's just a visual uh, edge break on this is all I care about.
that. How we look in there? I'll oh, just do it like that. Okay. Dunsky, a little deburring, and then we're uh, we're good. Well, playing around with this gauge actually kind of reminded me of a um, of a story that I've uh, had up on the uh, on the whiteboard there for a while, and you guys may have seen it up there. Um, it's called uh, the thermostat story. I'm in the in the frame here. Let's uh, do that. Pretty sure, I'm in the frame now. So, so uh, anyway, I've been carrying that story on the uh, um, on the whiteboard for a while now, and a couple a couple guys have asked about it, and I just kind of was waiting for the right time to uh, to tell the story. But it's it's kind of uh, it's funny because I'm playing around with this uh, this pressure gauge here. It's got a little needle here, and that's kind of part of the story. So the way the story goes is, uh, and some of you guys may, uh, can probably relate to this, is uh, you have an argument with your wife about, the, uh, about where to keep the thermostat set. Uh, she's always cold and you're always hot. And um, so the way the story goes is this couple was arguing about where that thermostat should be set. And uh, so she would turn it up and uh, turn the heater on and uh, the husband would go and, uh, and turn it down again. And so they had this constant kind of battle, this tug of war with the, uh, with the thermostat. So uh, uh, it was actually getting pretty bad. And uh, so what the guy did was, uh, and he was a clever sort, kind of like uh, maybe an engineer or something like that. I don't know. I don't, it wasn't anybody that I knew, it was just a, uh, um, the story was related to me by somebody else. So, um, anyway, uh, so he was a clever sort. So what he did is he took the thermostat apart, okay? And uh, he, took the, he took the needle and when it was set at the temperature that he liked, he actually bent the needle till it read the temperature that she liked, okay? And, um, then, um, as part of the as part of this thing, he uh, um, he uh, just kind of threw up his hands one day and said, "Well, you win. You know, set it wherever you want, right?" So she would go up and she'd look at the thing and she'd go, "Oh, it's 75 degrees. Perfect. I, I don't have to touch it, right?" And um, uh, but it was actually more like 65 or whatever it was. I don't know. Um, and uh, I guess he got her to agree to a, a particular top end temperature. Anyway, uh, so she was pretty smug about the whole thing and, uh, um, and kind of giving him the, uh, well, I won kind of looks. And, uh, and he was thinking in his mind, he says, well, you think you won, but I really won. And um, uh, ultimately, uh, um, you know, he, he couldn't stand it anymore, so he had to tell her. <laughs> and uh, I guess he told her, and, uh, and uh, at first she was kind of angry and... Uh, but then they both got a big laugh out of it. So kind of that's the thermostat story. So she thought she had won, but he knew he had won. So uh, so be careful uh, um, uh, getting into an, into an argument with your wife on uh, on a thermostat. But it was kind of an appropriate story. I was playing around with this uh, pressure gauge. So I thought I'd tell it. It's not a not a super funny story, but kind of kind of interesting. Anyway, there's a little base for the uh, for for that. It looks pretty good, black and white together and um, um, kind of this stark mechanical uh, uh, gauge look. So anyway, thanks. Okay, so here's the two, uh, the two
cutting torch homemade tools I wanted to show you guys. Um, let's look at this one first. This is a, a circle cutting tool here. And uh, let, me, let me show you how it goes on the torch. <clears throat> this is a standard uh, Victor uh, Journeyman torch here. It has this, uh, this split clamp here. And what this does is it goes around the, uh, around the gas tubes here like so. And like most circle burners, you know, uh, uh, they, they take a little practice to get good with. Okay, so now we can slide, to change the radius, we can slide that around. And then we also have this rod here, and we can actually come out like this. And a clever guy could make uh, a whole set of rods here and end up with, a, um, say, a center punch, and then like so. Now this one will actually go pretty small here. Um, let's, uh, let's adjust it for something a little, well let's adjust it for something like that. Yeah, something like that, okay. Just, well, I got no center in here, but that's the general idea. So you got a center in here and then you start to cut and then you rotate this around like so and then what I used to do when I had to do this back in my former life is I would start kind of wound up like this okay and maybe put this over my shoulder and then I would get going like so well, I get too much stuff in the way here and so I'd, I'd pre-wind up here and then I would get you know, close to half a circle or more than half a circle uh, uh, in one lick. And, um, and now this one I think was for, I don't know, that might be about right if it's in a nice center punch mark. Yeah, that, that could work. Yeah, you know, I got no flame to gauge where it, uh, where it belongs right now. But uh, anyway, that's, in, and you can change the radius. And this one goes real small here. So you can see, you can get it up real close to the torch. I think I've cut a three-quarter inch diameter hole with this at one point or another. So uh, um, I don't do this much more anymore. Uh, I mainly kind of use the torch for uh, for heating things and straightening things and then straight cuts. Um, anyway, this is a little tool I made uh, more than 30 years ago. Um, and uh, I made a, a few of them. I gave a few of them away to folks, and uh, nothing ever really came of it. So um, anyway, there you you get a look at the thing there. I mean, you can adapt it to whatever torch you have. The other one is this uh, this little burning wheel here, like so. And the way this works here is we slip it onto the uh, the tip, okay, and set it appropriately. And then the idea here is, oop, I think I got give myself a little bit more there. So you can you can make these long reaching cuts with this thing here, but it just gives you something to hold that end of the torch up, and you can creep along that line, and it holds a nice uniform distance to the material. Okay. All right, holds a nice uniform distance to the material, and it rolls really easily, okay? Um, so you can reach, like a junkyard guy, right? You can reach way out there, and you can make a cut, okay? And I suppose, you know, I never, um, I would always have a line uh, uh, to follow or something like that. Um, so, you know, I didn't use a guide with this particular one. Well, the last one I want to show you, you grab it. Is this one here? Now, this is a short range, uh, short range burning guide, and uh, so you kind of hold on to it with one hand, and then you put the torch against it like this, and you can put a hose clamp around there or something to kind of hold the distance, right? But what's nice about this one here is um, there's nothing to interfere with the flame because it's a round bar, right? 
there's nothing to interfere with the flame and it slides because it's just a very light contact along the side there. So, um, and then, you know, it's got a flat bar welded to the backside so that it doesn't rock on you. But, you know, if you got straight cuts up to, you know, what is it, two feet or something like that or 600 millimeters, um, you know, you can make a nice cut. So the normal attitude would be like this. You'd line up and then you'd come along like so. Um, and it's quick to position. Uh, you know, it's heavy enough that it stays in place. You can put a little pressure, a little side pressure against it. Uh, it works pretty good. All right. Anyway, I just wanted to share this with you guys, the little burning wheel. And this one's got a, uh, a bronze bushing in it and a shoulder bolt. And it's just made out of a nut. Um, and it's even a little, little TIG weld on there. That's uh, old school there. But uh, it doesn't fit real tight, and it shouldn't fit real tight. Okay. And then here's this guy here. Okay, that's the uh, that was Full Circle Tool Company. That was that was me many 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 years ago uh, when I first thought I wanted to do my own business thing there or something. So uh, that's when I lived in Concord, uh, California. So anyway, it's all made out of brass, and this is a steel rod here. Um, anyway, um, thanks for looking. What do you want for those? Eight dollars. Eight? Okay. Se andan paseando, tienen ese carrito de cosas.
copper hammer. Crap, crummy looking handle. Are you interested? No. It's one of these little hacksaws. <clears throat> yeah, that one's kind of messed up. Tell me how much is the price? I have been advising the offer. Yeah, most 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 of the